I dream of becoming a famous ballerina with a crown and a pink tutu. Right now, I really want to dance the pas de trois in a nutcracker. I love that part. I've dreamed of being a prima ballerina since I was a child. I'd like to dance solo parts, of course, but I have no problem dancing in the corps de ballet. I don't want other ballerinas to be jealous of me to the point of putting glass in my shoes. They did that once to a dancer. I want everything to be smooth. Regina, do it like yesterday. Thighs towards the bar, shoulders away from it. Raise your leg as far as it will go. Stay where you are with shoulder pointing backwards. Jane, your elbow, feet back. Shift your feet backwards. Every mother bringing her child to the academy believes she will be an accomplished ballet dancer. You've raised your child and gone through all the trouble to hand her over, but mark my words, at best she's going to dance in the back row of court de ballet. Mothers wince when they hear that. 80% of the girls end up there, even though all of them dream of a crown and pink tutu. Just take off those rose-colored spectacles. You see how graceful they are when they step, but you should know that makes them very miserable because of the pain they suffer from. Sacrifices have to be made here. The Mariinsky Theater is so big. That's why I want to be a part of it. But when I first went on stage, I felt very scared. My heart was pounding the first time I performed on the Mariinsky stage. Okay, everyone, get ready. Initially, there are a lot of names on the list, but then the list gradually gets shorter. For instance, if they put a list with three columns of names, you'll see about ten people at most left on it by the end. Sometimes it hurts when you really want it. Like, we have bigger girls who are never chosen for any parts, and they usually get upset when the lists are put up. They think, I hope I'll be there, but they aren't. The thing is, they're not very good candidates to begin with. And go! You're still alive, Polina? You okay? Training here is a very stressful experience. Exams and rehearsals are a never-ending process. Evaluations are stressful as well. The child is nervous because she doesn't know if her performance is good enough to be accepted. If she is turned down, her self-esteem suffers. You have to be very strong mentally and physically to face up to the challenge. If you are turned down, you don't need to give up on everything. There are many up-and-coming dancers in the theatre. Everybody is given the opportunity to dance. But sometimes, some of them have plenty of work. For some people, like me, there were periods where I had nothing to do, until recently. Luckily, I'm much busier this season.
After rehearsing and performing some of the parts, I'm completely exhausted. But nobody envies me because they know it's hard work. They see that you're almost ready to die. When you leave the corps de ballet to do solo parts, you feel very lonely because some of your friends have turned away from you. That's the sort of situation that I experienced during the first year of my fourth season. But now, everybody has come round to the thought that I'm a solo dancer, after all. Move a little closer to her. There should be no distance between you. Take a step towards her and make sure her chest faces this way, right up to her tutu. Delicately. Very often, Oksana finds herself at the center of some gossip. This is only natural, because when she suddenly appears in a solo part after dancing in the corps de ballet for a long time, well, everybody starts whispering about her. I think all those rumors are started by many other dancers wanting to take her place. The guys are far easier to deal with in general. They are better at agreeing on things and at just clearing the air. Ballet dancers are single-minded people. They devote their lives to one cause, to work and to serve the theatre. Their audience should only see the results of their labour, up there on the stage, illuminated by the spotlight. Sometimes they'll spend months or maybe years training just to be able to dance a beautiful variation that lasts maybe a couple of minutes. At the end of the day, the ballet dancer is totally played out, so much so that he looks more dead than alive. It's no wonder people say that if a ballet dancer doesn't feel pain when he gets up, it means he's more or less dead. Good. Good. Timur, oh, one second. You're obviously standing way too close. Far, far too close. She's doing the parkourou, and you're over here. Of course you can catch her here, but she ends up over there. My boyfriend is a solo ballet dancer, so you could say we spend all of our time together. There's no rivalry. We stimulate each other to improve our performance. I say stuff like, why did you let go? And then he says, why did you dive into a stretch? I can't support you. That sort of thing. All this criticism to one another does help us. But of course, I think it upsets him when I overdo it. Your brain is always at work. It never takes a rest. We argue a lot because we do need to relax to forget all about our work and switch to other activities. But that never happens. For instance, Oksana might have to dance in new ballets while there's nothing for me to do. I find it hard to dance on this stage. It's true that I always get nervous dancing on other stages because I feel responsible for what I'm doing. But this stage squeezes a good deal of moral and physical strength out of me. 
I don't know why. Perhaps there is something in its history, traditions, or the audience that makes performing here so difficult. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's performance will begin in 20 minutes. What you see on stage looks gloriously beautiful and everything seems as it should be. But I know it's the result of very hard work. And if someone were to ask me whether I'd like to go through all of that again with the knowledge I have now, I'd think twice before answering the question. <laughs> Every day she says Mother Barina, Barina Syria, or Surya in Arabic. My name is uh, Ibrahim Munzer. The war beginning not far from my house. I'm scared about child, about family. The Syrian woman is a hero now. She's trying to protect her family, her, her home. My name is Usama Haj Muhammad. I'm planning to stay in Russia to build new life in Russia here. Three of us share a room. Christina and I come from different cities, and the other girls from St. Petersburg. We usually get up at 7.30. Some of us like to get up earlier. Classes begin at 9.20. Sometimes we have seven, eight, or even nine lessons lasting until 5.30 p.m. Sometimes we have rehearsals after that. Then we do our homework. Some of us come here to stretch, others to play the piano. Before, when I was at home, I used to have about half an hour to watch TV or simply relax. But not now. I haven't watched TV for more than a month, maybe even two and a half. 
I rented a room with a girl during the first year here. During the first season, I was lucky to get a room all to myself, even though you can get two people in here. Downstairs, two people live together in a room like this. I'd rather stay away from this dormitory. Some buildings in St. Petersburg are said to emit an unpleasant energy. I think this is one such building. <laughs> After I came to Perm to try to enter ballet school, three girls out of 80 were admitted. I was the only one to finish that school. The teacher shouted at me, saying, lose weight, idiot. It's true that keeping in shape is quite a challenge. I try not to eat anything before going to bed. But when I come home, after a performance, I really want to eat. All I can afford is a glass of yogurt before going to bed. Food is a big problem for us. Back home, you can eat whatever you want, but here you have to be thin. Sometimes it's hard to hold back. Yes, you're allowed to eat more or less what you like, but only a small portion at a time. If you overdo it, you have to exercise. I know that sugar ends up in the thighs, and if you become too fat, they kick you out. It's hard for Palina because everybody is eating fruit and chocolates and drinking juice in front of her. She isn't allowed to eat those things. It's clear that she is still a kid and wants everything, but she's not allowed. What annoys me most of all is that my teacher tells me that I'm doing very well, but then she takes off some marks because she says I haven't got the right figure. Don't cross your feet and don't drag them like that. Point your toes. You're not jumping at all. Jump! There. Jump! Now the last year you managed to push. Every other time you were going like this. You need to go up. Talented children are few and far between. That's why we have to make the others do things to the best of their ability. We want them to be up to the mark so that ballet companies get good dances after graduation. Fortunately, no starlet is overlooked in the academy's corridors. We make them sweat here. I have supported Diana since she was in third form. I've trained her throughout the years that she has been here. But regrettably, I don't have much opportunity for that now. Such a talented student is a great joy for the teacher. Dina, well, every year she progressed. Could we have predicted she'd get to where she is now? No, no, I really don't think so. Frankly, she wasn't doing very well at the time, but she had no qualms about it. What am I supposed to do, she would ask? Shall I work on the steps? Okay, that's exactly what I'm going to do. She just did it and made progress. If you turn down an offer to dance solo parts because you have an injury or something, they won't make the offer again. You end up being blacklisted. 
Now I've got a strained tendon, but I keep on working anyway. Because I realized that if I take a break, I won't catch up. One time, I had torn a ligament. Of course, I didn't want the shame of refusing the part in Swan Lake. Anyway, I knew the injury would still somehow interfere with my dancing regardless. But soon I changed my mind afterwards. I can do it. I can do it, I said. And that's why I got loads of work. One time Oksana was told to prepare seven numbers in a short period of time. They were totally different routines. She rehearsed them for four or five hours a day. And then she woke up in the morning and saw that her knee had completely swollen up. I took all those painkillers and I still danced. Just a second. Hello? Hi, Oksana. Are you going to show up at tomorrow's rehearsal? Wasn't it cancelled? Please, come. Okay, I will. It seems no one wants to go. Tomorrow was meant to be the one day off in two weeks. And now it isn't. Of course, I'm going to have children. Family is what I treasure, most of all. Everybody says that. She says that too because it's not on her mind right now. But if she has to choose between being a prima ballerina and having a family, she'll settle for the former. As for me, I have the same approach. Work will come first, as long as the outlook is good. I know that if I have a child, I won't be able to devote myself completely to the profession. I keep trying to convince myself that children can wait, but I think about it all the time. It never occurred to me that what I'm doing might be seen as a desire to build a career. No, I have chosen an artistic path of my own. My accomplishments are the result of my inner development. They give me strength, a vivid perception of life and its purpose. I take an earnest view of my development. I want to enjoy the process and make sure that this period of my life lasts for as long as it can. I realize that a child would turn my life upside down. Okay, what's this? Where's everyone? They got sick. I'm very insecure. I used to dream of being a prima ballerina. I would even appear in solo parts. They played with the idea of allowing me to dance a really important role, but I had a problem with my knee at the time. Perhaps it's for the best, because otherwise I might have never become a teacher. And the second part of life is no less interesting than the first one. In a different way, yes, but still. Shoulder blades, one, two. The arm comes back up, three, four. And legs, stretching up, four. The head, one, two. Three, and four. Kovalyova helped me get admitted to the school and become a ballet dancer. I earned a reputation because of her. She was the first to read something in my eyes that prompted her to look after me. She has four daughters of her own, and I guess you can call me her fifth. I've got five nice grandchildren. All I can say about them is that they're simply fantastic. I only had daughters 
But now I have three grandsons and two granddaughters. Watching Diana on stage or rehearsing with her took a good deal of my time, probably more than I could have spent with my daughter Lisa. But she never complained. She probably understood what kind of dancer Diana was. And Elisa was following her own path. She gave birth to a child recently. She might yet dance in minor parts just to breathe the atmosphere of dance. She doesn't aspire for more because she's not a bleed ballerina. But dancers doing solo parts or prima ballerinas find it very difficult to write an end to their careers. They want more of the same. You feel like a grown-up artist performing on the big stage. You have a golden crown and a pink tutu. You have everything. I am lucky because there are many talented and capable dancers at the Marinsky Theatre. But some give up too early and stop short in their development. And some are just not given a chance. But then, sometimes you see other dancers and you think, wow, I wish I could dance that well. <laughs> <laughs> 